We're back with more STL TV Live. I'm here with Mac Bradley and Megan Whitehead from Mardi Gras St. Louis. And we're going to continue the discussion about Mardi Gras. You know, people with Mardi Gras in St. Louis, they absolutely love it. What do you think it is? Do you think it's just because it brings together so many people? Or do you think it's just because it's really one big party? What do you think it is? Well, it is, it is one big party. But it's also with 14 different events, there's something for everybody. You know, the the... The Beg and Pet Parade, that whole weekend is a great family weekend in Soulard. Uh, the Grand Parade is obviously, it's the biggest event that St. Louis puts on all year long. And we draw people now from all over the country come to St. Louis in February, <laughs> right? Which you would think is not the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, but we fill up hotel rooms uh, in downtown during a time when there's really not much else going on in St. Louis. So it, it really has become more even more than a regional event, mm -hmm. uh, it's a national event. Absolutely, absolutely. And we always say we were talking about this before we started, but the second largest, but one of the largest Mardi Gras celebrations it is. Uh, in the country. It is. So, Megan, I want to talk more about the parade. Tell me about some of the judges this year. We mentioned that Bud Light's a big sponsor. Sure. But again, you know, tell me the judges, who they are, and again, like who's participating. We pull from not only uh, the community, but from the media, of course, because um, we pull from people that uh, are involved in theater and the arts here in St. Louis so they have that creative eye that they understand you know what adherence to theme looks like what a great costume might look like so they'll have a community a civic background like uh, the people that are uh, the Leukemia Society Foundation winners from their charitable works they'll come and be a judge so we pull from all over the community uh, sure, here's some of the, the floats that we're showing now. You can see breaks dimension, has three different dimension, has you know, ongoing moving parts. That's why people come to this parade because you know, it is spectacular. It may not be the Rose Parade or the Macy's Parade. We don't have that budget. <laughs> These are people who get together with their friends and their family or like it's a group from work. An architectural firm has a crew. Mm -hmm. And they get together because they want to take their creativity outside of building elevators and cubicles into something that is a lot more fun to, to put together. And people work on the floats like months and months, months in advance. And months and months. And, and, and they will spend thousands of dollars. They, they really do and it's, it's not to recoup that in prize money it is for the sheer pleasure of doing this with their friends and family and, and and they have a great time and you can see it when people are throwing the beads off of it just how much fun they actually have and you're right because people come together from work or from an organization right. speaking of organizations and charity I do want to mention there is a charitable component to Mardi Gras mm -hmm. tell me about right. that Mac. well uh, so the the mayor's ball benefits the Mardi Gras Foundation uh, which makes these community grants in Soulard and then also downtown. The, uh, uh, the Beg and Pet Parade benefits Open Door Animal Sanctuary, which is a no-kill uh, animal shelter in Jefferson County. And this is, if not their largest, it is one of their largest fundraisers of the year. And the Winter Dog Derby benefits them as well. That's correct. Um, so there's, there's that element to it. The, the Mardi Gras Foundation is designed to give something back to Soulard and downtown because they've been gracious enough to host this party for 35 <laughs> years. So, um, you know, you want to be uh, good neighbors and we wanted to find a way to do something to give something back to the community. Okay, well, we're looking at a calendar of events there. So it's already started, technically kicked off, as you said, January 6th. Right. But there's the February events and the softball tournament. I love that you guys do the wine and whiskey and beer taste. I always think that's great, a great addition. And the, the Snowman Softball benefits the Police Athletic League. Oh, I fantastic. forgot to mention that fantastic. before. Yeah, it's always fun to come out for that. Mm -hmm. there's, nothing, there's nothing like playing softball in February. <laughs> <laughs> but then you can follow it up with all the, all the yeah. Cajun cook-off and everything else. Beg and Pet Parade, I know every Every pet lover loves that, looks forward to that. There's some great costumes for that. The Mayor's Ball, City Hall looks beautiful for that. I mean, really a wonderful, wonderful lineup. And then the big grand parade is March 1st. And then remind me, there's the closing parade that goes down Washington Avenue. And that's different right. than the grand parade. Megan, just tell me about that before we wrap up. Well, first up. of all, it's at night. So it's a lit up parade. It's all the floats that uh, take extra time to add lights and, and bells and whistles to their floats. Mm -hmm. So it's really, really pretty. And it goes right through downtown on Washington and very family friendly event. All right, well, there we have it. We just had a beautiful photo. Thank you for being here. Thank <laughs> Thanks you so for much. having and us. And good luck. You. Good luck with the masses. <laughs> oh, it should be easy. <laughs>
<laughs> so I'll see you down there. I'll see you in Sular. All right. Well, coming up next on STL TV Live, if you have an eye for the creative arts or simply want a good show, stay tuned to hear about one of St. Louis's most anticipated art events of the year. We'll be right back.